There's important new information about the InfoWars social media purge to discuss, published Wednesday in Salon, so take it with a grain of salt, but the pieces are there for this account to be largely true. We now know who's behind the effort to start the purge in the first place. Styx calls him the professional hall monitor. I call him the creature from the Estrogen Lagoon. This is Jared Holt, who writes for the website Right Wing Watch. Sort of a discount Southern Poverty Law Center. All the same smearing, but a fraction of the notoriety. Despite direct George Soros funding, their website gets minimal traffic, and they mostly publish hit pieces on conservatives and libertarians, calling them racist and bigoted and misogynist and white supremacist, whatever terms come out of their grab bag of generic smears, to discredit and malign rather than reason and debate. And I know from experience, this guy Jared Holt has smeared pretty much every YouTuber around me, and I've invited him to discuss on my channel. He refused, telling me in a now-deleted tweet that I need to drink less soy to earn the honor of speaking with him. He's the intellectual equivalent of a kindergarten tattletale. All he does is try to get you in trouble, but he'll never actually meet you at recess. According to this interview he gave to Salon detailing how he is responsible for spearheading the effort to oust Jones off the internet, Holt says he first went to Spotify, and the reason, at least originally, wasn't even on principle. Apparently, it was simple jealousy. A strange thing to admit. Holt says, I use Spotify to listen to music while at work. I noticed they had a podcast section, so I was looking through that. When I found InfoWars, I was surprised, mostly because of my own experience as someone who has a podcast, aside from my work at Right Wing Watch, I experienced a personal struggle to get Spotify to list my own podcast. I guess I was a little bit offended that Alex Jones was able to get on the air and I wasn't. Yeah, well, the solution there is make a podcast that doesn't suck, Jared. Make a podcast that people actually want to listen to. Instead of striving for success himself, Holt chooses resentment of others and to try to tear down their success. He says he started tweeting about how Alex Jones shouldn't be on Spotify. He encouraged people to threaten a boycott of Spotify. And he wrote an article on Right Wing watch about how InfoWars violates the Spotify terms of service and should therefore be banned. And from there, Spotify caved, removing all InfoWars content from their service. Several other sites this week followed doing the same. I'm slightly skeptical that Holt was the original or sole reason this happened, however. According to the PolitiFact chronology, Apple was actually the first to the purge, and Facebook may have beat Spotify too, so there have to be some other forces in play. But the fact remains, a large force behind this effort was Holt, driven by ideological vindictiveness and just plain old jealousy over the success of others. And this is important information. This is a very important consideration in shaping how we think about and form opinions of this Alex Jones and Infowars social media ban. I've heard dozens of people this week express thoughts like, yeah, well, it's only Alex Jones. He's so fringe. What are we really losing anyway? And what's he contributing positively? Why should we care if a bunch of loony misinformation gets scrubbed from the internet. Here's why you should care. The standards by which Alex Jones was banned can and will be used to do the same thing to an endless list of other alleged wrong thinkers. The standards and tactics used against Jones are not unique to Jones. It is crucial to emphasize that this Alex Jones social media purge is due at least in large part not to the independent determination of these social media companies, not because Facebook or YouTube or any of the others looked at individual pieces of Alex Jones content and decided for themselves whether their terms were being violated or not. This occurred because they were pressured to do it. With the same bully tactics that people like Jared Holt use to enforce their worldview everywhere they go. Oh, hey, Facebook, I see someone made what I determined to be a racist post on your site. Why do you allow racist posts on your site? Is it because you're also racist? Gee, it sure would be a shame if someone with a billionaire's backing and nothing better to do every day constantly banged an internet gong about how racist you are. It sure would be a shame if someone smeared you into compliance 
clients. I'm not saying these social media giants don't have a bias against content like Jones's already on their own. There's plenty of evidence that they do. But in this case, there is also plenty of evidence that they didn't ban Alex Jones purely out of their own conviction. They did it for fear of the browbeating. And we should be concerned that they cave to the bullies because the bullies aren't going to use any type of objective standard in enforcing what content is okay and what content isn't. Just take a look at the case Holt made about why Infowars should be banned from Spotify. They're subjectively offensive in Holt's judgment. If that's the standard, we better get to banning every Howard Stern and Dan Savage who have the audacity to speak crudely on the internet. He says Infowars engages in harassment because they criticize public figures. I hate to tell you, Jared, but that's exactly what you do too. He also notes a lawsuit alleges harassment against Infowars figures, but if that's the standard to ban people off the internet, simple allegations. So much for due process and a presumption of innocence. Holt also says Infowars threatens violence, but look how weak his examples are. He says Alex Jones threatened to shoot Robert Mueller when Jones clearly says he's going to duel him politically, not literally. We're gonna walk out the square, politically, high noon, and he's gonna find out when he makes a move, man. Mm. Politically. Holt says Alex Jones declared, quote, open season on his enemies when again, he clearly said on political terms, not violent terms. I say it's open season on him. Intellectually, culturally, economically. Holt says Infowars' Owen Schroyer threatened civil war when in fact he too was speaking politically and culturally, then speculating about the possibility of a civil war, not threatening to start it. Unless the left comes to grips with reality, unless the left comes to terms with their own mental issues. I hate saying this. I really don't want to say this. I, I, I just feel like civil war is inevitable. And in that piece, Owen said specifically that he wants to be friendly, but authoritarian leftists like Jared Holt won't allow it. Because that's the kind of guy I am. I want to come together with these people. You know, let's go out. Let's go have a good time. Let's go to a ball game. Let's go to a concert. Let's go bowling, whatever. The worst example Holt has is an InfoWars correspondent, not Alex Jones himself, but a correspondent saying he'd like to fight Robert Mueller and James Comey, not threatening to do it, but saying he'd enjoy it. Let's duke it out. I mean, you know what? You want to behave like a thug? You want to behave like that? Well, this is what you deserve. Let's duke it out. And one of these cases isn't even an InfoWars stream. It's an entirely separate, unassociated channel. We're now assigning threats of violence by proxy. If you've ever talked to someone who once threatened violence, you yourself are now violent. A case this flimsy used to silence the speech of one person or organization is worrisome enough, but there's no reason to believe that Jared Holt or Right Wing Watch will stop here. Since they were effective in this case, even though the facts are at odds with them, they're likely to replicate this strategy over and over again. And maybe you don't care about Alex Jones, but I bet you do care about at least one of the long list of people Jared Holt and Right Wing Watch target with similar tactics. I took a look at all the people and organizations Jared Holt has targeted in just 2018 alone. Here's only a partial list. <coughs> Sargon, Roaming Millennial, Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Gavin McInnes, Stefan Molyneux, Styx, Brittany Pettibone, Blonde, Black Pigeon Speaks, Andy Worski, Faith Goldie, Ann Coulter, Count Ankula, Tommy Robinson, Paul Joseph Watson, <gasps> Lauren Southern, Jack Posobiec, Tommy Lahren, Nick Fuentes, Baked Alaska, Sean Hannity, Diamond and Sill, Katie Hopkins, The Daily Caller, Mike Cernovich, Sebastian Gorka, and The Rebel. Is there anything wrong with criticizing these people or challenging their ideas? No, of course not. But that's not what Jared Holt does. He smears and maligns with the intent of deplatforming. Alex Jones is just the first box checked on a long list. Jared Holt and Right Wing Watch aren't going to be satisfied with that and go home. They are going to use the same standards to go after a whole host of others. And unless we grow some cultural spine and stand up to these bullies and tell them no, they aren't going to stop. And their view of free speech, or perhaps their opposition to it, 
will reign. Consider Holt's view of internet freedom as expressed in that Salon interview. He says, ever since the internet began, there's been the existential question over how much responsibility platforms have for content that its users generate. The internet started as a radical experiment in free speech, and I think early on, we saw the benefits of that more clearly. I'm thinking back to events like the Arab Spring and that sort of stuff, to see what a free and open internet could do for democracy at large, and on the world stage. But over the past couple of years, we've experienced the negative effects. We were spoiled by the good before we saw the ugly. Yeah, that's called freedom, Jared. Freedom means both good and bad outcomes are possible, but I get to choose my path. I get to separate the good from the ugly for myself, and I don't need your pearl-clutching overwatch to do that for me, no matter how good you think your intentions are. And that is really the question I think we ought to consider carefully when navigating this issue. Sure, you might think Alex Jones sucks. Maybe you even think he's dangerous, maybe even evil. You are entitled to that. My question for you, though, is who should decide? Should you decide that for yourself and adjust your media consumption according to your own judgment? Or should these people decide that for you? Do you want this team of self-appointed moms and dads to have the remote and the parental control password? Or do you think you should be able to change the channel for yourself? When you give them the authority to ban things things you don't like on arbitrary terms, you also give them the authority to ban things you do like. And I promise you, Jared Holt is not quitting with Alex Jones. It's not just what he's ideologically driven to do. It's what he's paid to do. He's got a billionaire's backing and nothing but time to chip away at internet freedom. And the longer we look away, the longer we excuse him, the more cracks he will create. And he will not quit until his tactics are culturally viewed as immoral, not virtuous. So stand up for freedom not based on whether you agree with its exercise or not, but because it's the right thing. Because if you want to be free yourself, you must defend it for others. If we don't, this creature is working every single day to make sure that today and tomorrow are a little less free than the last. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.